Hello everyone, we're excited to announce a new feature of Scraper APIs, the custom parser. Naturally, I assume you may have quite a few questions such as what is it, how to use it, and for what? Thankfully, this video is specifically aimed at answering them and many more. So strap in and let's get started. First of all, what is custom parser? Simply put, it's a free scrapers API feature that lets you define your own parsing and data processing logic that is executed on a raw scraping result. To more thoroughly examine custom parser traits, let's compare it to another feature, Adaptive Parser. While Adaptive Parser enables automated parsing of almost any e-commerce product page, the Custom Parser feature expands your options and flexibility throughout the entire process. Importantly, parsers built by our team and Custom Parser cannot be used together. Therefore, we recommend picking a feature that suits your needs best. Overall, the custom parser allows you to first, extract all text from an HTML document, second, parse data using XPath and CSS expressions, third, manipulate strings with predefined functions and rejects expressions, fourth, perform common string actions like conversion, indexing, and retrieving the length, and fifth, do mathematical calculations such as calculating the average, finding the maximum and minimum values, and multiplying values. So. Now that we've learned the whys and what's of custom parser, let's see how we can start using it. Before we begin, there are a couple of key aspects we should discuss. Firstly, you should already have a basic grasp of Oxlab Scraper APIs. Don't worry if you don't though, if you're new to our web scraping solutions, you can familiarize yourself by reading our documentation in the description below, or by checking out this video on Scraper APIs. As mentioned before, with custom parser, you can select elements with either XPath or CSS selectors. Using CSS, an example would look like this. As CSS doesn't have a similar function to XPath, you'll have to string two functions together. The first will select the H1 element, while the second will extract its text. More complex examples of using CSS will be in our documentation, which you can find in the description below. With XPath, you can conveniently use the text function which extracts the text value of the selected node. Now, on a fundamental level, to use custom parser, you just have to pass a JSON object with instructions while submitting a job as the code example shows now. The result will look like this. Seems simple, right? Well, to better understand the process, let's examine another example. This time, step by step. To use custom parser, the first step requires you to provide a set of parsing underscore instructions when creating a job. Let's say you want to parse the number of total results being search yields with a search term test. An example of job parameters would look like this. A couple of essential steps to remember is that step one, you must provide the parse true parameter. And step two, parsing instructions should be described in the parsing underscore instructions field. The sample parsing instructions we've shown above specify that the aim is to parse the number of search results from the scraped document and put the results in the number of the results field. The instructions on how to parse the field by defining a pipeline can be done as follows. The pipeline describes a list of data processing functions to be executed. The functions are executed in the order that they appear on the list and take the output of the previous function as the input. In the sample pipeline above, the XPath1 function is used. Check out the full list of available functions in the description. Now, the XPath1 function allows you to process an HTML document using XPath expressions and XSLT functions. As a function argument, specify the exact path where the target element can be found. You can also instruct the parser to select the text found in the target element. The parse result of the sample job above should look like this. Crucially, Custom Parser not only offers text extraction from scraped HTML, but it can also execute basic data processing functions. For example, the previously described parsing instructions extract number of results as a text with extra keywords you may not need. If you want to get the number of results for the given query test in the numeric data type, you can reuse the same parsing instructions and the amount from string function to the existing pipeline. The parse result of the sample job above should look like this. And that's it. We can see that it parsed the document accurately. If you found our explanation of how custom parser works helpful, make sure to like and subscribe as we have many more tutorial and explanatory videos on our YouTube channel. Now, how about we take it a step further 
and look at an example that's a little more complex and features nested parsing. The example will be based on this sample HTML and will often reference sections of it, so make sure to not forget it. The use case is that we'll want to parse all information related to shoes. Also, the parse result should represent the document structure of the provided HTML. Keep in mind you're targeting this part of the sample HTML. And you would like the parse result to be of the following structure. Parsing structures would look like this. Let's call it example 2 also known as parsing instructions, which are used to parse shoes information. Notably, XPath 1 works similarly to XPath, but instead of returning a list of all matches, it returns the first matched item. So, in the example above, the shoes property is the only property defined in the outmost instruction scope. The shoes property contains nested parsing instructions. Note, because FNS property is missing, the shoes instruction scope does not have a pipeline defined. This means pipelines defined in the title, price, and description scopes will use the document under parse as a pipeline input. In example 2, you can see a repetition of this in XPath expressions. The repetition can be avoided by defining a pipeline in shoe scope, which we'll call example 3. By using the parsing instructions provided in example 3, custom parser will first start processing shoes underscore FNS pipeline, which will output the shoes HTML element, Second, take the shoes underscore FNS pipeline output and use it as an input for pipelines defined in title, price, and description scopes. And third, process title, price, and description pipeline to produce final values. The result will look the same as a result from example 2. The main difference between example 2 and example 3 is that in example 3, pipeline is defined in the shoes scope. This additional pipeline selects the element of the shoes and passes it on to further pipelines found deeper in the instructions hierarchy. So, you've seen an explanation of why we've created a custom parser, what problems it solves, how to start using it, and how it functions in a more complex parsing situation. But what we didn't and couldn't do, as it would take a long time, is show you all the available uses of custom parser. This feature does open numerous possibilities and to better grasp the scope of them and custom parser itself, we highly recommend checking out the documentation, which is in our description below. Thanks for watching and see you next time.